What's up everybody, Rob Choi here with Old Town. Uh, one of the species I've really enjoyed targeting these past few years is the Northern Snakehead. They're super aggressive. A lot of times you, you're watching them follow your topwater lure and waking behind it and, and the explosions and acrobatics and, and just, they're super fun to catch. And um, I had a friend of mine recently ask for some um, tips for beginners. So I thought I'd make this video and hopefully uh, they'll help you out. We are in tidal creeks of Northern Virginia, um, but I'm pretty sure a lot of these tactics will, will transfer over to where you might be. All right, let's get on them. as I mentioned, uh, we're in tidal creeks in Northern Virginia, so any of the tributaries off of the Potomac River system should have, should hold snakeheads. Um, and the areas look a lot like this. Um, lots of winding, bending, um, lots of uh, coves and pads, lots of structure. Um, these little feeder creeks right here are great areas for, for them to ambush, so it's a great, great area to target. Um, other areas, obviously the pads. The pads are great um, in and around, through the pads. Um, other areas include some of the alleyways between the pads and the edge of the, of the, the grass, the, mount, the marsh, I guess. Um, and those are good alleyways for, for them to travel and, and ambush. So, and honestly, all along the, the, uh, the shoreline. I mean, anytime you see some structure and, and um, think it might be a good ambush spot for them, it more than likely that um, you're gonna find them in that area. So standing up is by no means a requirement, but uh, having a, a kayak that's stable enough for you to stand and get that extra height advantage can definitely help. Um, sometimes you'll see them hanging out on the edge of a marsh or, or the pads, or like, like this one here, just cruising the flat. Um, I am in a Predator 13 um, Old Town also has the new Sportsman line. They, they are all definitely stable enough for you to stand. And another quick note, if you do find one, more than likely there's going to be others around, like this one here that I ended up spooking off. So I got fellow pro staffer Roland Butler, aka Texas Monster. Uh, he's been catching a whole lot of them too. And I just I figured, you know what? Let's talk about what we use. What do you like to use? Well, usually early in the season, I'll, I'll start off uh, because there's not a lot of grass. I love a chatterbait. Um, black and blue is usually my favorite color. Uh, usually want to throw a trailer on that. This is the uh, Gambler Komodo. Um, but the best way to really fish for them is a topwater frog. Uh, whether that's a hollow body, a just regular plastic kicking leg frog, or uh, a popping frog is one of my favorites. Yep. It's something out of this world to yep. see them come out of the water. Watching them wake behind it is, is just so much fun. Exactly. You don't know how big the fish is about to be. All yep. you know Ooh. is there is a wake come coming on. at your bait. I know you want. You have You're to falling. do everything come in your on, power not to snatch it before they get to it. Yeah, and, and don't slow it down. Oh my God, he's right um, if you If it starts waking, don't, don't slow it down. You got to keep it going. I mean, even when you get all the way to the boat, I mean, I might drop it when it gets right to the yeah. boat, you know, free spool, yeah. just drop it straight down. Um, I also love the frog too. I, I do a lot of the um, the prop ones in the back, like the uh, the Teckler, Teckle Sprinkler, Sprink, Sprinkler, Sprinker. Spricker. Um, and then the ribbit, like the little- um, Stanley ribbit. Yeah, which is uh, the weightless weedless, just on a big thick worm hook. Um, I think we're using for the most part like medium heavy gears and then you got the the um, heavy heavy uh, Yeah, I got a real heavy one. This is for when it gets low tide uh, You get a big grass line everywhere um, I like to fish the holes that are inside of that grass that's emergent now that you can see um, because they'll sit I feel like they're territorial and They don't like to move too much. So if you had one that was sitting in a hole the whole time while it was high when it gets low, that's the only little bit of water there, and he's really not going to go anywhere. And he's also got a natural ambush spot. It's a yep. hole. If something goes in that hole, he's going to eat it. Yeah. It's his. So, 
A um, lot of great tactics. Um, I also like the inline, inline spinner that I've been using lately. I love that thing. I actually ended up making it because the I saw somebody using. It. I was like, that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. because you can. You know, it's a lot of vibration. Mm -hmm. and that's part of part of it. It's like they they they're attracted to noise and, and vibration and movement. Um, they they have relatively small eyes. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of sensing. You know, with their lateral line, mm -hmm. and then uh, you notice they got a whole bunch of holes, little in them. spots, yeah, yeah on their so, sensories. Yeah. Kind of like a shark, honestly, when you think about Kinda. it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're curious like that too. I mean, yeah. I've had them turn and look right at me mm -hmm. from underneath the boat. Yep. So there's, there's some sort of intelligence <laughs> back creepy. there. A little bit. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. A little too. bit. Um, anything else that we're not thinking about? Uh, that's pretty much all I really throw for them. Is, yeah, uh, I mean, but I've what, what have you caught them on though? Oh, I've all caught them on the plastic place. worms, yeah, uh, bass fishing. Yep. I've caught them on creature baits, yep. spinner baits, yep. flukes, spinner baits. super flukes, flukes. They do love flukes. They yep. do love the fluke. Uh, it's a good. I'm sure good they way get a to go Senko. after them. Like you get you get a Senko in front of them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they probably too. would. I mean, they're they're just aggressive. Yeah, you know, they're really aggressive. Um, yeah. I think one of the uh, more interesting parts of uh, dealing with snakehead is what happens when you get them in the boat. Or even just beside the boat. Yeah. A, a, on anywhere near, like towards the end of the fight, the, the end game of, of, the, of their fight is, is not that fun. <laughs> it's, here's a tip: clear, clear what you have in your cockpit. Yeah. Because if you if you're planning on not using a net and, and just putting it, even if you have a net, because you're gonna have to eventually put them down, and it's gonna go crazy. There's gonna be an explosion in your cockpit. And they're gonna act like they're, they're calmed down, wow, right? They're gonna act like that? they're done, and you get them in, and then all of a sudden they're gonna explode, like sheep's head or even yeah. cobia. Yeah. yeah. You can have them down for a long time, and all of a sudden, bam, yeah. they, they explode oh, with some power. Jesus These Christ. things are the same way, and they explode with some power, and they're muscular. Very. Yeah, and big. I'm scared to put them down. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and toothy. <laughs> and toothy. Uh, they do tend to get lockjaw when, when you bring them on, so, you, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll stick a knife just in the jaw and then spread it and then and then get the, get lip, the grip, lip, gripper. lip gripper in there yeah definitely want a, a long pair of long nose pliers because sometimes it gets way down in there and uh you definitely don't want to be sticking your fingers in there so i mean really the, the fun part is watching them and watching them hit and then the explosion of that for the most part after that they are coming pretty much straight to this boat yeah pretty they you think they're done and chill but again once you get them in the kayak there's a whole nother fight you gotta deal with yeah <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that they are an invasive species. There's some controversy surrounding them. One group wants them to be killed on site immediately. Uh, another group uh, wants them to have game fish status with specs for trophies and everything. I know that the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries here in Virginia uh, has been trying to figure out their long-term effect on the ecosystem and preliminary findings uh, show that they aren't as bad as people initially thought. What I have to say is please just follow your local laws. Uh, in Virginia, we don't have to kill them, but you can't transport them unless they are dead. Um, I do know they are delicious though. Regardless of what you do with the fish, I hope these tips uh, are helpful to you and I hope you have good luck catching them.